Well, I think this is a challenge. Um, in one sentence, why and how do you think cognitive therapy works? <laughs> well, first of all... I think it's a great question. I think it's a terrific question, and the question is, what is cognitive therapy? And so cognitive therapy is not just a, uh, uh, a box of techniques. It's not a toolbox any, any more than, let's say, the Taj Mahal is, could be considered just a toolbox. Cognitive therapy is actually an architecture. And in order to um, understand cognitive therapy, you have to understand the blueprint that uh, is provided the architecture. Once you know the blueprint, then you can use the tools and then you can build a building uh, or you can build a therapy uh, based on that. So the theory of cognitive therapy, very briefly, is that individuals in the course of their development uh, experience both certain vulnerabilities. And these vulnerabilities can be symbolized by uh, maladaptive attitudes. So one of the vulnerabilities that somebody might have is if I talk in public, people are going to ridicule me. Or if I try something hard, I'm not going to be able to make it. And over a period of time, with some individuals, these particular attitudes become uh, fortified and uh, uh, kind of translocated. They they, they tend to permeate the individual's whole personality. And so you get, uh, in some cases, what you call uh, personality disorder because these dysfunctional beliefs are so deeply encrusted that they kind of dominate the individual's interactions and adjustments. So that's kind of what happens in the Axis II disorders. And the Axis I disorders, particularly depression, which we've been seeing now, is that these negative attitudes that people have had over time become activated as a result of something that happens, a whole series of things that impinge on their specific vulnerabilities, on their dysfunctional attitudes. And then, as a result of that, they start to see things <coughs> in a biased way. So they go then from biased attitudes, such as, I'm no good, to the biased perception, which is if people don't listen to me, it means I'm no good. And the perception itself then is twisted. It's not based on evidence, but it's based on internal factors. So how does cognitive therapy work? Well, cognitive therapy works by virtue of its changing certain key elements in this theoretical construction that I just gave you. Uh, it works through changing the negative, in the case of depression, it works in changing the negative perceptions so that the person no longer sees things in terms of black and white, which is mainly black. And okay. it, more basically, it changes the biased beliefs, such as I'm no good or I'm a failure or I'm unlovable and so on. So when we do studies of the efficacy of cognitive therapy and we look for what accounts for the change, the improvement in cognitive therapy, we find that there's been a change in the basic attitudes and also in the perceptions. So if you give people a test, we used to do this with a binocular test, and in a binocular test, there are two images that are shown, one for each eye. And when there are competing images coming into the eye, uh, then certain psychological factors determine which of the two images you see. It's something called binocular rivalry. When people are depressed and you see two images, they're going to see the negative image. When they get over the depression, they're going to see the positive image. So that even at a perceptual level, cognitive therapy or any therapy that works is going to change not only the beliefs but also the perceptions. Now, if you'd like, I could tell you the kind of pictures. Yes. You interested? Okay. So one of the pictures we have had when we did the study is we had a, a table. There's a table, and there's a group of people sitting around the table, and there are several vases with flowers, and the people are all smiling and happy. Then the companion picture uh, is... Uh, 
uh, is matched for the density. However, around the table is a on the table is a coffin. And the same number of people are looking at the coffin instead of the flowers, and they all look very sad. So the depressed person will see the sad picture. Interesting, not by choice, but happens automatically. Sees the bad picture, but doesn't see the good one. When they're treated successfully, the bad picture goes away and they only see the good one. So this shows that at the most primitive level, uh, people who are depressed see things negatively. So how does cognitive therapy work? It changes the negative image. How does it change the negative image? By getting at the basic negative beliefs, which is kind of a simplified way of putting it. But I think that my way of thinking is the way it works.